this is it, right? The rock store? I lied. The Council of Valkyries. The Valkyries are of Valhalla, are they not? Glad to see you're paying attention, brother. You are correct. Valhalla, the great hall of the Ain Heriar, is their home within Asgard. But while there, they are subject to the scrutiny of the Allfather himself. And relations between the Valkyries and Odin were tense during my tenure as his advisor. Why? Well, that's an even longer story, lad. For now, why don't we look around for some clues? Thinks he can hear you, lad. The helms must only retain but a small portion of their owner. I'd wager the rest is in transit to Valhalla to try and fix the mess left by their absence. Man, who is she? Gunnar, mistress of war. After any conflict, big or small, she would be first on the scene, sussing out the worthy spirits for a free trip to Valhalla. A gruesome task, but she took great pride in it. Any conflict? Impossible. It's true. She had help from her sisters, of course, but Gunnar was always first to arrive. Her judgment of the Fallen was unparalleled, and an invaluable resource to Odin. She was one of his favorites. Sorry, lad. The sight of Gondul always took my breath away. Gondul had a silver tongue, a sharp wit, and struck a figure so stunning it literally drove men insane. Odin forbid her from setting foot in Midgard after a time, as insanity is not a welcome trait in Valhalla. This is none other than Gerdrifol, the master of arms in Valhalla, responsible for arming and training Odin's Inheriar. His what? His army, come Ragnarok. The entire reason Valhalla exists, you see. The Inheriar wait in the Great Hall endlessly, feasting, drinking, and fa- Ah, uh, fornicating themselves silly. Once Ragnarok begins, Odin calls them into service to fight on his behalf. Gerdrifol had her hands full training that lot. This, my friends, is Kara. Now, Valkyries are volatile by nature, but Kara, the lass is Wild Storm personified. A Wild Storm? Aye, calm and collected. Then the air would shift and the fury of her storm would unleash. It was beautiful in a way, assuming you could find proper shelter. Her tears would cleanse the blood soaked battlefields. This is Rota, a chooser of the slain. I thought all the Valkyrie did that. Not exactly, lad. Although that is what they're most famous for, and by far their greatest responsibility. You've seen what happens to the dead without the judgment of the Valkyries. Hellwalkers. That's right. Rota, Gunnar, Skuld. Without them to clean up the aftermath of battle, hell overflows with souls meant for Valhalla. A sorry state of affairs. Rota must be beside herself. Here we have Air, the healer. A Valkyrie healer? Strange. 
air was strange, as a matter of fact. Very quiet. Very calm. Where her sisters were violent rapids, the air was a gentle stream. She healed the wounds of both mortals and gods, and even a certain all-knowing sage who once drank too much and fell off a mountain. Ugh, not my proudest moment. Well, Hilda, mistress of battle. She and Odin got on quite well, actually. Her and the other Valkyries, not so much. She would spend most of her time here in Midgard observing discord between the living and sewing some up herself from time to time. She lived for conflict. Some say she was conflict personified. I wonder what will become of her now that she's free. Once the daughter of a powerful chieftain, she fell defending him during a reaver attack. Olrun was escorted to Valhalla, but she chose to devote her afterlife to the pursuit of knowledge above all else. Quite unusual behavior amongst the constant drinking and feasting of her fellow Valhallian denizens. How'd she end up a Valkyrie? Odin. He saw a kindred spirit in Olrun's single-minded pursuit of knowledge. He appointed her as a Valkyrie's resident historian. Yeah. 